Okay, everybody, welcome. We are all ready to start. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so you can see the video. Spotlight it. Okay. All right, everyone. Welcome to Learn to Draw. If you were here last month, I want to see. Can you raise your hand if you were here last month? Raise your hand if you learned how to draw dog man last month. Yes. Okay. We have a few people that went awesome. So today we're going to be working on some Halloween themed drawings. Um, my camera's being a little bit strange. I can't get a lot closer than this. I'm sorry, but this is going to be, I'm going to move this over a little bit. Maybe there we go. So this is going to be the drawing we're going to be working on today. Um, so the things that we need, um, Ms. Jackie, could you post it? Thank you. It's on the Facebook discussion of the event. Um, so again, you're going to need paper, a pencil, an eraser, a marker, or a black crayon, and you're going to need colored pencils. And then for this effect, the background effect here, you're going to need um, a pencil sharpener, but that's optional. So we're going to get to it right away because we do want to keep this under an hour. And this is a whole drawing we're going to make. So let's begin. Are you ready? Can you start? Can you raise your hand if you're ready to start? And you have everything you need? Okay, we're good. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Oh, and my name is Miss Lorraine. I work here at the Central Park Library in the Youth Services Department. Nice to meet everybody. I know you can't see me, but we're going to get started, okay? So we're going to do this cute little drawing. We're going to do it a little bit differently. And remember, with everything we do here with our art classes, you are the artist. So if you don't like something that I drew, you can totally change it. If you want to change the face of the pumpkin or the ghost, or you want to have the cat on this side or no cat at all, it's totally up to you. I'm just going to teach you how I do it as a base, and then you can change it to whatever you like. So here's my blank piece of paper, and here is my pencil, my little City of Santa Clara pencil, and we have an eraser on top, and we're going to get started. So step number one. You see the grass here? We're going to start at the base. So we're going to start with the grass. And the grass is a little bit curved. So we're going to make a line, a squiggly line that goes up like a little mountain. Like this. I'll give you some time to try it. That's a little, little mountain. OK. And if you don't have time to color it in, if you just want to leave it black and white, that's also fine, whatever you want to do. Next, we're going to start with our pumpkin. So, and that's why we're doing with a pencil first. Then we're going to go back and erase everything. Um, and that way we don't have these pencil lines. But for now, we can keep these. So next is going to be, is here a cute little pumpkin? I'm going to show you how to easily draw a pumpkin. So first, we're gonna start right in the middle of the page. We're gonna start by drawing a U, just the letter U, a big wide one, like that. Okay. And then next to this big U in the middle that you just drew, you're gonna do two more to the side on each side. So in total, we're gonna have five U's, okay? So we're gonna go one, two use so now we have three and then we go one and two good job everybody see the use and now what we're gonna do we're gonna connect this one to the rest of the pumpkin like that and same thing with this other one we're just gonna make it a little bit closer like so, and then we are gonna draw a line up and we're gonna do another U like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Gonna go up and then another U. Now, when you're drawing, this is supposed to be a little bit round, right? And I'm noticing that mine is looking more like a bell pepper. It's very flat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go back with my pencil and I'm gonna shape it a little bit more round to the way that I like it, like that. You can always go back and change whatever you didn't like. 
That's a nice thing about drawing our own stuff is that it can come out however we want it. So see, it's a little bit messy and that's fine because we're gonna go back and erase everything. Okay, and now we have to add how many U's in the middle? We have one, two, and three. So now we wanna add three more U's on the top to close the gap here, okay? So I'm gonna erase this because it's distracting me like that. And see what I did here is that I'm pressing the pencil too hard on the paper. You wanna not do that. So don't make the same mistake I did because it was too hard on the paper and now I left the mark. So try to do it a little bit lighter. Okay, then we're gonna go one, two, and three. Then I'm gonna shape this last one, just like that. So I'll give you guys some time to work on it. In the meantime, these cute little erasers for the occasion. So I'm gonna use the pumpkin on the pumpkin. And I'm gonna delete all the lines that I don't want. So that's that grass line in the middle. All my extra pumpkin lines to make it into one big round pumpkin. Again, if you guys have any questions, just type them in the chat. But you're probably busy drawing, so good job. And remember, if for some reason you need to go back on a step, just let us know in the chat because we're also recording this on YouTube. And on YouTube, you can actually rewind. So we can always give you that YouTube link so you can rewind to whatever step you're on. Okay. Now, we are going to add the stem to our pumpkin. We're going to put a little, little hat on the top. So let me just see by a race of hands. Raise your little hand on Zoom. How are we doing? Are we ready to move on to the STEM? Yes, okay, good. Looks like everybody's moving pretty quickly. Good job, you guys. Okay, so now you see our pumpkin has a STEM. It's got a little swirly hair on the top as well. I'm gonna draw that. So for the STEM, very simple. You just wanna draw a line this way. Whoop. Just like that. Just a simple line across. Then we're gonna do a tiny, tiny line down. And then another half line, half of this, half of that. If you wanted to, you could do the whole stem second out like that, but pumpkins have very thick stems. So the base is kind of like this, like that. Okay, let's work on that. I'm gonna erase some more and see. I marked it really hard because I'm really excited to draw this pumpkin. So don't make that same mistake as me. Make sure you don't mark it as hard on the paper as me. Okay. And finally, the little hair. See the little hair here? We're just gonna do a swirly hair. And the hair, if you want to, I'm gonna have this one to show you guys other things that you can do. So you can have practice the hair however you want. So you can do one swirl like this, which is what I did on this one. Or you can just do like this or like this, whatever you want. But I don't like repeating the one I already made. So I'm gonna give it like three swirls, ready? Here you go. One, two, three. That is my pumpkin's hair. Now we're gonna get to the fun stuff, which is your pumpkin space. So this is my original pumpkin and I got this idea of the pumpkin and the ghost from YouTube and the rest I added on my own. But remember, this is your artwork. You are the artist today, so you can do whatever you want. If you don't want your pumpkin to have a face, you don't have to add a face. This one's a happy pumpkin. So now that I'm making a different one, I'm gonna make an evil pumpkin. And I'll show you how to make my evil one. But again, if you want the happy one for reference, I'll put it right here on the side. Here we go. Make my evil pumpkin. I'm gonna start by doing the nose. The nose is gonna be right in the middle. 
So if you want to, you could draw a line. That's how a lot of artists do that and draw a line in the middle and down. I don't need a line, but you can if you want to. And I'm going to do a heart upside down. So like this. An upside down heart. See that? Upside down heart. This is really going to bother me. Okay. And now I'm going to do the smile. Okay. And for the smile, or maybe I want to make it angry. What do you think? I'm going to ask you in the chat. Should we make it an angry evil pumpkin or a happy evil pumpkin? Can you raise your hand for happy? Oh, evil. And can you raise your hand for like angry, evil, scary? That's more scary. So it looks like by popular demand, we want the scary one. Okay. So for the scary one, I'm going to flip basically this pumpkin's face upside down. So we're going to have it have a mean face. Ready? So we're going to do that. It's like a sad face. Kind of like you would draw a sad face like this. But then we're going to make it look mean like that. So I'm going to do the same line on the bottom and I'm going to add some teeth. So here's, oh, you know what? If we're doing evil, it can be regular teeth. They're going to be fangs. So a triangle. We're going to do another one and another triangle. And then we're going to make it go back down. So I know it just looks sad for now, but I promise you, we're going to make it look mean. Okay. How do you make a spooky face? So there are quite a few faces. I'm glad that you asked because there's a, quite a few faces that you can make. So if you make a spooky face, so the pumpkin that I made, the happy one, is kind of like this, right? Like a happy face, like that. Although that's kind of scary on its own, even. To make a spooky face, you kind of want to do this. You can flip it upside down. So you would flip out the eyes and the smile. So you could go like this, right? Totally upside down for the eyes and then the face. And then to make it look spooky, you could add some mean eyebrows like this. The eyebrows are really, really what does it. So that looks like a mean face. Not like an annoyed face. But in the happy face, of course. The happy face for this pumpkin is this one that I made with the heart in the middle. But again, it's really the eyebrows that do it. So if you have the little eyebrows on top, that's how it looks happy. So for this one, for my big pumpkin specifically, I'm gonna do kind of like a, a half circle because that makes it look really mean. And then remember, we talked about the eyebrows. So for the eyebrows, I'm gonna put two little lines going down. And now we have an angry, evil pumpkin. Okay, so again, you can try whatever faces you want to do, whatever you like, Just try different ones. And once you get the base of the drawing, you can start drawing whatever faces you want on different pumpkins. All right, how are we doing? Everybody ready for the next step? Not yet? Raise your hand. Okay, we have quite a few people. So this drawing is going to take a while. That's why I'm moving a little bit quickly. I know I'm moving more quickly today than other days, but again, if you miss a step or you need to go back with anything, just let us know. Uh, Miss Jackie, the amazing Miss Jackie's on standby. She can post the link to the YouTube recording where you can actually rewind um, while we're live. All right, so next is our ghost. So you see the ghost is popping out of the pumpkin. It's holding a little piece of candy. Again, you can make the ghost hold whatever you want. So this time, because I have it holding a piece of candy here, I'm gonna make, because we have a spoopy, a spoopy, spoopy pumpkin, we're gonna have a spoopy ghost as well. So we are gonna go take a line here. So it's gonna be halfway through the stem. Make sure you guys can see. Oh, the happy face again, sure. So half a circle and then up. 
half the circle up and a smile. Okay. And oh, parents, if you want to, I actually posted a picture of this drawing on the Instagram. If you want it as a reference, you can go to our Instagram and uh, look at the story. There's a copy there. But I'll have it off to the side so you should still be able to see it while I work on the other one. All right, so now we're going to make a spoopy ghost. And this one's going to go, we're going to take halfway through the stem here. We're going to go up. And around like that. So it's kind of like a text bubble if you're drawing a comic. But for this one, you see the little arms are inside so cute holding a candy, but this one is gonna be a ghost that's trying to scare you. So I'm gonna add some arms on the side here. Like, That sound effect is very necessary. And that's gonna be <laughs> our ghost shape. Okay. And I'm gonna go back and erase. Remember, erase the lines that you don't want. I think this pencil, by the way, we usually give out pencils sometimes at our outreach events. This is one of them. It changes colors. Very cool pencil, but it's also a very strong pencil. So it's not a good one for drawing, unfortunately. Very good one for everything else. Okay. And same thing with my ghost. You have this cute little ghost. Look how cute it is. No cute ghost. We're going to make a mean ghost right now. So I'm going to make a mean face. Ready for the mean face? Here it goes. Same thing as this one. I'm gonna make it smiling so it's even creepier. Here we go. Go one eye. And then the second eye. And then the smile. I'm gonna do a tiny little smile. Look how evil that is. He looks like he really wants to scare you. I'm gonna add some eyebrows here in here. And there's a spoopy ghost. It's not nice at all. It's like, oh, so cute. Here's some candy. Nope. All right. There's a ghost. So feel free to draw a face on your ghost. And again, if you want some samples for faces, I can draw you some. So the original ghost that I had was two little eyes that are a little separate, but not too separate. Like that. And you do a little sparkle in the middle to make it look super cute and then you have a, like a sideways three that's a cute little face or you can do the same thing with a tiny tiny smile super cute you also do the same thing if you wanted to have a sad ghost for some reason we all express our emotions differently, sometimes through art. We'll do like this, so sad. Oh, I don't like that one. I don't want the ghost to be sad. But we have the evil ghost right here. Okay, how are we doing? Are we ready to move on to the next step? Do we get our faces on our ghosts? Raise your hand. So we have one. Okay, a couple people are ready to move on. All right. Well, the next steps are pretty simple. Um, we're almost done with the drawing part. Then we're gonna go back and trace everything and then we're gonna go back and color everything. So if you see in this one, I have the moon and the bath on this side, but I actually made my pumpkin and my ghost too big. So I'm gonna move the moon to the side and the bath. So all you need to do for the moon is to draw a circle. You don't want it to be too big either because the moon is really far away, right? So we only see a tiny, tiny, tiny dot in the sky, okay? And for the craters inside the moon, we're gonna make these tiny half circles all over our moon here. So we're gonna do half circle and a bigger half circle and a bigger half circle and a tiny half circle and a tiny half circle and a tiny half circle. You get the gist of it. Just like that. That's our moon. 
And then we'll move on to bats in just a little bit. I'll give you a couple minutes. I'm not very good with bats. I'm trying to see a good way of drawing a bat. Okay. And I'm just going to do two bats, and they should be pretty simple. So for the bat, you're going to pick some random spots next to your moon on top. Of, I'm going to do one on top here and one on the side. But it's up to you how many bats you want to do. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So for the bat, you want to make sure you have enough space because a bat has very long wings. So now that I'm looking at it, I don't want to use the space because it's too small. So I'm going to do one here and one here. Okay. And there's two different positions. I mean, you could do many positions if you want, but I'm going to show you two different ones right now. So the first one I'm going to show you is a regular bat, regular sideways bat. And I'm going to do that one here. So we're going to do a circle or like an oval. I'm sorry, an oval, right? Like that. And we're going to add the two tiny ears on top. So you want to do tiny, tiny triangles on the top like that. And so the bat wings will extend to both sides. We're going to do two lines per wing on the top. So it goes one, two, like that. Two. And then in the bottom, you kind of want to do like this. Okay. So it's going to go one, two, three. And there you go. Let's do it again, because that was a little tough. I'm going to go one line up, one to the side, and then we're going to connect it through backwards U's, upside down U's. One U, two U's, and three U's. And there's your bat. That bat is a lot better than this bat, or this bat. So I'm glad that we practiced. See, practice will help you get better. And now, so remember, line up, line sideways, one, two, three, use. Up, side, one, two, three, okay? And then the second bat I'm gonna show you is when bats are flying down, so they flap their wings, so I'm gonna do one flapping down. In this one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do an oval, like so. Okay, and then an ear here and an ear here. And my friends on YouTube also, if you um, have any questions, feel free to type in the chat. I'm also keeping an eye on Facebook, on YouTube. Okay, there's our second bat. And then we're gonna have it flapping down. So pretty much the same thing we did, but down. So we're gonna go one, two, one, two, three, just like we did earlier. So same thing, but down. One, two, one, two, three. And there are our bats. Yay. Okay, we have to keep going. I'm sorry if I'm rushing. I wanna make sure we get through everything. And then next thing we have is tombstones, which are super easy. And the cat is also pretty simple. And then we can start outlining everything. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit just because I'm trying to save time and also because I don't wanna have the same drawing twice. So I have two tombstones here. I'm actually just gonna keep one tombstone on the side and I'm gonna move the cat to the other side. So it's up to you however you wanna do it. You can add, remove, whatever you like, but that way I can show you how to still drop both. So I'm gonna put the tombstone on this side and all you have to do is do a giant upside down U. That's it. Super easy. And tombstones usually have something written on it, right? So you could do some text. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. That's my writing. But now I'm seeing it sideways. I'm going to do it again. So it goes blah, 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 blah. And then this one, blah, 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 blah. That's better. So the tombstone is super simple, super easy, okay? 
and then the cat. So I'm going to throw it, show you how to draw. This is just an outline of a cat. It's not a very complicated cat, but it's pretty simple. So you're going to do another U, not too big, like that. Okay. And then starting on the halfway point from the legs of the U, you're going to do another line, kind of like a bridge or like a house, but you will add stuff to it. So be careful. So it's just the top here. Okay, so it's a U and then like a wide U at the top. Okay, now I'm gonna add the cat's tail because it's the easiest part. So this is one leg. We're gonna turn it into one leg like that. And then cats have four legs, right? So there's gonna be one, two, three, four. And then I like to add a back leg over here. It's kind of popping out from the back. I just think it looks cool. So that's our second like back leg. And then the tail. So when cats are really upset, and usually this cat would be pretty upset because it just saw a ghost. When cats are upset, they have very bushy tails. So the regular tails get really, really bushed up. So we're gonna do a really bushy tail and we're just gonna do squiggly lines all the way around like this. Ooh, and the cat, this cat is really, really scared. Because it just saw a ghost. I would be too. And this is our bushy tailed cat. Somebody asked, can you make a face on the moon? Of course you can. That is a great idea, Sonaira. That is an excellent idea. Yes, add a face on the moon. That's a very good idea. Okay. And then the next part of the cat is going to be the second set of legs. So we're going to turn this into one leg. And then the second leg, we're just going to put right next to it. Because when cats are scared or upset, they arch like this all the time. My cat looks at herself in the mirror and she does this. They get real scared very easily. So, and now we're going to add the cat's head. So we're going to add... We're going to, from the last leg here, we're going to go up a little bit. And then we're going to do a sideways, kind of like this. So see, this is kind of the snout of the cat. We're going to go up, up, and around. And then we're going to connect it to the neck. And finally, we want to add the ears. So when cats are upset, last thing, they put their ears back. So you see this cat? I realized it until after I drew it. When cats are scared, they actually have their ears back. They don't have them up like that. So we're gonna draw the ears back to be a little bit more accurate. So kind of like that. And then we're gonna do one on the side. That's the second ear. And that cat is upset. Now we're gonna color in the cat in black because my cats are in for Halloween. So you don't really have to have a face for it, but I figured if the cat had a face, it would look something like this. Meow. Just like that. Sound effects necessary every time. Okay. All right, everyone. We are at 430 and we only have 30 minutes to color everything. And so I'm going to move on faster. The last thing is, can you tell me in the chat? You can raise your hands if you want. Do you need me to show you how to do the Halloween text? Or do you think you can do this on your own? So raise your hand if you want me to show you how to do this creepy font. Okay, there's a few. Okay, it's not a problem. So that one's pretty easy. So all you want to do, I'm going to do it on another piece of paper so you can see. This is my first attempt at Dogman. That wasn't great. But so we're going to I essentially just write the words Happy Halloween, right? And you want to make sure they're spaced out. Maybe not that much, but essentially like that. But while we're doing every line, we're going to make a squiggly line because that's like a spooky font. Happy Halloween. Because I feel like when you are reading it out loud, if it's in this font, that's how you would read it. With a little ooh on your voice. Miss Jackie's laughing at me. Like that. Okay. You got it? So I'm going to do that in here. 
it's going to go not too big because, again, I made my drawing really big this time. And then Halloween will be longer, so I'm going to start a little bit this way. You are all keeping up super, super well. I'm surprised nobody has told me to slow down. Great job, everyone. You're all doing great. And I cannot wait to see your drawing. So I will ask um, Ms. Jackie to put my email in the chat. If you could please send me any pictures of your drawing, I'll be more than happy to post them to our social media pages. So parents, remember, if you send us a picture of your child's face, it might be posted on social media. So make sure... You send us a photo of just the craft, or if you want your child to be featured on a page, you can totally send us a photo with your child's face in there. But please, 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 I really want to see your drawing. So please send me some pictures. I would really appreciate it. And there's also going to be a survey at the end of this event. If you could give me your feedback so I can improve our programming here at the Santa Clara CD Library, I'd love to hear from you. So please consider taking that survey after this. Happy Halloween, like that. Oh, that looks good. That looks better than this one. Okay, so now we've gone to the point where we're gonna go back and trace everything. So I have a marker, let me grab it. You might have a Crayola marker or a crayon, or if you want, you can, uh, you can leave it in pencil, you can use a pen, you could do whatever you want, but I'm just gonna do this so that you can see the, the drawing better. And I'm gonna try to get through it pretty quickly so I can start showing you some coloring techniques. So I'm just gonna start to trace all the lines that I want to keep. And the marker will overpower the pencil and then I'll go back and delete whatever lines I missed because I was erasing as I went when we were drawing, but there might be some that I missed. And then trace, trace, trace. Anything you had before. And it doesn't have to be perfect either. And actually for my ghost eyes, I'm gonna leave them blank. So I'm gonna color them in probably red because it's gonna be a super evil ghost. And for, but for my pumpkin, I'm gonna actually color in the face because it looks, the contrast between orange and black, I really like it. So I'm just gonna color that in. When I drew this originally, I just drew it with the markers. So that's why you can't see any pencil lines. With this one, I that this pretty hard, so you might be able to see it, but that's okay. Are you guys having a good time? Can you raise your hand if you're having a good time? Any fun? Yay, okay, good, I'm glad. Somebody asked me, can you draw a wolf? Actually, I don't know how to draw a wolf at the top of my head, but I can tell you, we have a bunch of great drawing books at the Central Park Library. So if you live nearby, you can come to any of our libraries. We have some excellent drawing books here. If you don't live in our area, you can also find a lot of tutorials on YouTube, but the books that we have, or you can check your local library because the books will show you step-by-step step how to do it as opposed to somebody just kind of drawing it really fast. The books will tell you step-by-step step how to draw something. So I highly recommend checking out some how to draw Halloween books from your library. And if you live in Santa Clara, that library is us. So remember how I said I wasn't going to leave the face for the cat? Um, there it goes. 
it has no face because it's just an outline. But very upset kitty. And the more arched you made the cat, so this one's kind of white, you could have made it like very narrow. That means the cat is super upset because the more upset they are, the more they arch. So if you ever see a kitty arching, it's best not to approach it. My little curly hair. I don't know what happened here. I'm stuck. Okay. And then the bats, I'm also going to shade them in. You can actually, if you don't feel like the wings are long enough, you can always make them longer like this. I just added an extra line. It's easier with the Sharpie. And just by a show of hands, I want to, I'm curious to know, can you raise your hand on Zoom if you live near the Central Park Library in Santa Clara? Raise your hand if you actually visit us at the Central Park Library. Anybody? A couple people. Okay, cool. So I want to let you guys know we are having some Halloween crafts that you can do in the library. If you were here last week, you'll see you were able to make a little swirly ghost, take home, hang it up by your house, or you can leave it here to be hung up at the library. Well, now we are doing little spiders. So you can come up to the library. Tomorrow we are open in the afternoon. You can make a little spider to take home. It's very, very cute. It's Jackie and Miss Rachel came up with that and it's really, really cute. They did a great job. Okay. And now last is the words. And then we have about 20 minutes left. We can do it. I wanted to make sure you had a full, full page, not just the doodles, like a full drawing. And even I'm just going to show you some coloring techniques. You don't. We don't have to finish the whole thing together, um, but I do want to get to the coloring part because there's a few techniques that I think you'll really like. Okay. Excellent. So now I'm all done tracing. Do you have some questions in the chat? I could add cloth to the ghost. You're right. I can do that very fast. So let's add some cloth to make it look scarier. Good job. You have some great ideas, Naira. So person I request and some cloth. Okay, that's it because we got to get to the coloring part. So now I'm just going to go back and delete whatever lines I didn't use with the pencil. This is very fast. And now we'll have another drawing session again next month. I think if we have another one next month, I was thinking about doing a cat kid. Can you raise your hand if you like Cat Kid from Dogman? Raise your hand if you like Cat Kid, yes. We have a few people that are Cat Kid fans. Awesome, so maybe we could do a Cat Kid one because we did um, Dogman, so that one was very, very popular. So I think next month maybe we'll do Cat Kid. But for now we're celebrating the occasion and we're doing Halloween. Okay, now I went back and deleted everything I didn't want. Clean this up a little bit. 
All right, so for the coloring techniques that I'm gonna show you, see I have all my colors picked out here. What I wanna show you mainly is how I um, colored in the inside of the tombstones, the pumpkin, the ghost, the moon. But then what I really, really wanna get to is how I did the background because this will save you a lot of time and it'll look a lot nicer instead of drawing lines. There's a technique that you can use by shaving your pencil or your colored pencil. And you can only do this with colored pencil. It won't work with crayons, it won't work with markers. So if you don't have colored pencils, um, you can just shade in the background however you want. But this you can only do with a colored pencil. But let's draw, let's color in a pumpkin really quick. So the way that I like to color my pumpkin is to do the outskirts, like the outside lines, of the pumpkins and the pretty dark, like I really put a lot of pressure on the pencil. So it comes like a dark yellow and then we can do it lighter. But when we get to these lines here, if you think about it, a pumpkin has like a whole line like this, right? Like a pumpkin looks like that. And then like two more on the side, right? And then there's a green stem and that would be what a real pumpkin tile looks like. So, Instead of having the whole black line go down, I just keep going with the orange and kind of have the meat a little bit, although the face kind of gets in the way, but that's fine. Like that. And then I just, again, start a little bit rougher around the edges and then lighten it up as we get to the middle. So this is one of the shading techniques that really works out for these shapes because the shading can really make a difference in your drawings. And see, and then you just shaped it in a little bit lighter and it looks really cute. Somebody asked in the chat, are kids doing this? I would assume so. This is a drawing program for kids. But then again, I can't see you, so hope so. Raise your hand if you're a kid. Can you raise your hand if you're a kid? Yes, kids are drawing all perfect. Pretty much everybody, awesome. So yes, the answer is yes. Kids are drawing this. Oh, I'll get to the background in just a minute, okay? I promise I will. So for the in the meantime, just go ahead and color in your um stuff and the background is my favorite part so i'll get to it i have to sharpen my pencil a little bit i'll try to get through this quickly do you guys want me to show you the background now can you raise your hand if you want to see the background now because you know how to color in the rest yes we have a few okay so you want to get to the background okay let me finish coloring in the pumpkin and I'll show you how to do the background. You have to be very, very careful with the background, okay? It is a very cool technique, but it's also a little bit messy. So you wanna make sure that you're not on something that you can get dirty. And also you're gonna need to wash your hands after. And you'll see why in just a minute. I used to do this all the time when I was a kid. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my pumpkin like this. All right, so let me show you the background. So I'm going to do, you're going to need a, a pencil sharpener for this technique. So that's why I told you to get a pencil sharpener earlier. You're going to need a pencil sharpener for this one. So the background color that I'm going to use is this violet pencil. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to put your colored pencil in here, but you're going to angle it up so that the only part that you are shaving is this part of your pencil. You see that? this part right here. So you're gonna put this up like this. I'm gonna show you, you see? And then you're gonna rotate. And you see how all that like little bit of color is coming out? 
So that's the part you're going to use. So you can do as much as you can. So face it up and rotate it and sharpen it. And then eventually you're going to be with this really thin tip. So you want to keep going, going, going. You can pretty much keep going until it breaks. You want to keep going and sharpening and sharpening it. See that? A lot of it's coming out. Now look at this thin, very thin tip. I'm going to put it on the side for now. And then you're going to pour this where you want your color to go. Like that. Okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your finger and you're going to put it on the shaving and you're just going to spread it around and see how pretty it looks when you start doing this. This is a great way of coloring in for backgrounds when you have a lot of space that you need to cover. It looks a lot better than the lines. It's also really fun to do it. And it's a little bit messier, but it's really, really pretty in the end. Then you're just going to spread it around all over. And this basically just like goes into the paper and it falls apart. So you ideally wouldn't have any of these little pieces left. You're just gonna keep rubbing and rubbing it until they're all gone. Or most of them are gone at least. And then when you're run out, you just do it to your color pencil all over again. Yes, this is on YouTube. So let me give you the link. If you want to go back and watch this later, it is on YouTube. We have a few friends watching on YouTube right now. So hope you like this technique. And then when I was a kid, I used to draw a lot when I was a kid and a teenager. And now that I'm an adult, sometimes I'm too busy to draw. But you should really, if you like drawing, I highly recommend that you keep going, 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 because you'll just get better. And it is a great way to relax and do something you really enjoy. So see, and that, that wasn't a lot and it covered most of the drawing. So now I'm just going to put, oh, wrong one. I'm going to put some here. And you could do this with multiple colors. Like if you wanted the colors to, to change gradually, it would look really, really nice. So I'm just going to do it one color today because I don't want to make it too complicated, but you could use several colors if you wanted to. And if you run out, um, sometimes, especially me, because I am an adult, my fingers get tired. So if I do it with my finger, you can move on to the next fingers in your hand. You know how to do it all with one finger, but just remember to wash your hands when you're done and it'll come off really easily. And you also, um, if you can have some paper underneath so that you don't stay in the table or wherever it is you're drawing your desk or whatever. I'm gonna put some here. Here. And I'm going to do the same thing for the grass. I have a darker color. It's like a dark brown for that one. I'm actually going to do it again on the bottom. But this is a really, really easy way of covering up all the white space that you have left over. You can really get a lot out of it too. I think I'm surprised mine hasn't broken yet. Look how thin it is. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Just as I said that, it broke. Okay. We got 10 more minutes. I think we can do it, everyone. We can finish our whole drawing in 10 minutes. I mean, I have to, you don't have to. You can take your time on it. I highly recommend you take your time. But now that you know the technique, you can really take your time, add colors, remove colors, change the face, do whatever you want. And plus it's perfect for this kind of drawing too, because it gives you like a spooky, cloudy texture. It's really nice. It also works out really well with um, ocean drawings too. 
I used to draw a lot of ocean am- animals when I was a child. And so I would love doing this for the water effect. And then when you're done, you can just pick it up and tap it. You, oh, I'm sorry. What I just did, you don't want to do that because whatever pieces are left over were spread all over. So don't do that. I'm just going to blow like this. You can blow on it a little bit and then it'll be good. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom part here. Some people, if you want to, you can color the, um, the grass green, but assuming that this is like a spooky setting and the green is too happy for this type of drawing. So I'm not gonna do green. I'm gonna do like a dark brown, like they're like in a cemetery. Spooky haunted cemetery. Ah, broke it, hold on. I sharpen my pencil while I do that. Oh, how do you keep it out of the other line? So when I go around spraying this, I just make sure not to get too close to the line because you'll see there's still a little bit of white space around the edges, but it looks really nice either way. So you don't have to worry about getting too close to the lines. That's how you keep it out of other lines. It's just make sure that there's a safe distance between your finger and the line. That's not spreading too much. So again, I'm just sharpening the top part of the color pencil, not the wooden part, just the color part. And this should be more than enough. There we go. That should be enough. Especially with the darker colors, it's a lot easier to do this than the purple because the darker one is so overpowering so you don't need as much of the shavings okay now that my background is all finished, I'm just gonna add some finishing touches here to the ghost, the moon, the tombstone and the writing. So, and see here, I went over a little bit, but that's why I said, be careful. Keep drawing it in. So for the ghost, I do want to point out because the ghost that I am using is white. Again, the ghost can be any color you want, but I'm going to do like a silver just coming out from the bottom. And then you could spread it through. Like that. And then you could even rub it along to just like blend it in a little bit. Or if you wanted to color it in the same way we did for the background, you can, it's up to you. That actually would look really cool if you combine gray with the purple because the purple is the same color as the background so it'll actually look like a translucent ghost maybe i'll try that yeah let's try it real quick so i'm going to do gray edges here and i'm going to see if it works out 
with the purple. So because the background's purple and the ghost is see-through, it should just be a lighter purple, right? We got a comment from Mijabin on YouTube that you like the program. I'm glad you're having a good time. I'm having a blast. I love drawing with you all. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit. This one not too strong because it's a see-through ghost, right? Just a little bit, we'll see how it looks. Slightly not as strong as the rest. Yeah, you can always test things and if you don't like it, you can always change it or not do it again next time. So that you can, you probably can't really tell on Zoom because it's hard to see it not in person, but in person, it looks pretty cool. It actually just looks like a lighter, lighter purple. So it looks like the ghost is really see-through. So that worked out. So try it at home and see if you like it. I'm just gonna add some shading under the eyebrows here to make it look meaner. And then I say the eyes were gonna be red. Yes, I did. Oh, that looks super scary. I love it. And then last, oh, second to last. It's 4.58, we almost did it. But I do wanna finish the drawing, so we'll probably go like two minutes over, not too bad. Okay, and my last touch here is gonna be, I'm gonna go over the letters with some green, just to make it stand out a little more. I'm just gonna do lines. Do that kind of like the goosebumps font, you know, from the movie or the books. Goosebumps. It's like this like slimy green, just like that. Okay. You did two goats. Oh, that's cool. I would love to see it. Again, Miss Jackie, can you add my email one more time, please? Thank you. So again, please, 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 please send me pictures. I would love to see your drawings. I'm so excited to see what you guys came up with. And we'll post it on Instagram. We'll post it on Facebook. You can see it at home and we post it to social media. So make sure you send us a picture if you want to. I'd be more than happy to post those for everybody to see. Okay. And I am finished. Here's our final product. Yay! Thank you, Miss Jackie. All right. Okay, everybody. So that is it for today's event. Thank you so much for joining me. Do you have any last minute questions before we go? Because I'm going to end the webinar and just a minute here. Is there anything else? Any more questions? And if you're, I understand if you're busy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Oleka. Thank you, Tenley. I understand if you're busy drawing, so take your time. Please, please, please consider sending me some pictures. Thank you, Merlin. And thank you, parents, for being here today. If you can give me your feedback about the event, I would really appreciate it. Thank you for joining kiddos. Thank you for drawing with me. And I'll see you all in November. We'll have another drawing event. So these are our two drawings that we have for today. I actually like the second one a lot better because you guys helped me with it. So good job, everybody. Oh, and then my email is lromero1 with a one at the end. Um, so the next one, Oh, no, you typed it in right, Miss Jackie. Thanks, I'm, I'm in pay, just so you know, it's with a one at the end. Um, this was an hour long. And when is the next one? I don't have a date yet, but it's probably going to be a Tuesday. I'm thinking if today is the 12th, it could likely be the 9th. 
it's probably going to be the 9th. So the 9th of November would be a good day to have it. But I'll post it on Facebook if you follow us on Facebook. Um, or you can also look at our calendar online. Um, but yeah, this was one hour. And again, the email is lromero1 at santaclaraca.gov. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for attending. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for driving with me. And please send me some pictures, okay?